Welcome back, session 20. Glad you could join us. Happy New Year. Hopefully the holidays were kind to you. Uh, we'll get right to it. Session 20, makestocksfun.com. How do you evaluate a stock? So sometimes a friend might mention a company to you, or you'll be scrolling on Google, and Tesla will mention some like they sold 1 million cars more than what they had intended to. Stock goes up 20%, and this strikes your interest. So now I want to show you what to do with that interest. So how do you evaluate a co company? Um, why would you make stocks part of your life? Well, 8% averages from the market that goes back for decades, you know, maybe even a century. Stocks return much more than that on average. You can also get wealthy on autopilot. So if the stock offers a dividend, you can reinvest your dividends and therefore you don't even have to do anything if it's a successful company in a growing market decade after decade you can get wealthy by just having your stock accumulate more shares for you so basically i want to go into how i evaluate a company and see if that company is a good fit for you uh first of all do you have a spreadsheet i guess that's where i would like you to start and it's, you know, Google offers basically, you know, Google Sheets, Google Docs. I set up this spreadsheet for free. So you can just set one up or inquire through me and I can help you out with the basics. But you just want to a market index, first of all, and then just pipe into the market. Market fluctuates day to day, hour to hour, minute to minute. So you want to be aware of that. So just set up a log. And then if when somebody mentions a stock, you can just put the symbol down and I'll show you the steps of what I do. I go to big charts first. So here I discovered this company recently, uh, Franco Nevada Corporation. And this literally takes two minutes of my time. It's a five-step evaluation process. First of all, I make sure the company I'll piece is the market in the last 10 years. The black bars should be above the orange at all times. And that shows the dominance of how that company does with the market. So that's one example. Another one, everyone heard of Apple. Apple crushes the market. You know why? Because it impacts human lives. Think of if you lost your phone or something happened to your phone. You'd be in dire straits. Now, you, a lot of people have their wallets tied to their phone and their photos of their kids and goes on and on. So you don't want to lose your phone. And that's why one of the reasons why Apple is so successful at, at bringing quality products to you. And therefore, they crush the market over the long term. But that's what you want to keep in mind is companies that beat the market opposed to ones that don't. You know, people will sell out of a company that does not outpace the market. Why? Because they'll just join the market. You could just do the DIA, which uh, you know, I mentioned before, outpaces the, uh, has an 8% on average increase per year. So that's the first criteria that I do. And then other than that, then I like to see how much uh, cash flow they have. So then I'll go to Yahoo Finance and you can type in Apple. And then if you go to financials, cash flow, and there you go. And you just start back to 2020. And they were at 73 million, a year later at 92 million, then they're at 111 million. And then the trailing 12 months, you're basically at 100 million. So very solid company, always has cash, which is important. If they're a solid company with solid fund fundamentals, they'll have free cash flow. And this is Taiwan Semiconductor. They have 301 million. And then 262, 520, 442 trailing 12 months. 
So these are examples of quality companies. You always want to see increasing cash flow. So like if we were doing the Franco Nevada Corporation, we'll see them real quick and how that 491, uh, 194, 858, 425. So a little down here, but overall, it pretty much almost doubled. And then back to 425. So that's how, if it passes those two criteria, and then the third one that I'll look at is their earnings per share. And I go on macrotrends.net for that. So again, using like Apple as an example, go financials, income, and I go back to 2017, I get seven years of solid data. So 232, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3, $3
beneficial for long-term growth. And then we uh, develop a strategy after that. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. And then, you know, obviously you can look at their website, see what they all do, and then ask yourself, how does this company impact human lives? You know, like Tesla, the, they're, they're impacting lives because they do electric cars, which has been done before, but never on a global scale, they're never dominating the market in the way that they are. No one sold cars in the mall before either. So they're doing different things to sell their product in a, in a very effective way. So, and therefore it's impacting people's lives. They don't have to pay gas anymore. They can just charge your car and run, run it on electric charge. IIPR, they do marijuana. Why is that relevant? Well, marijuana wasn't approved before in the US and now it's becoming more and more approved. States are, uh, they're passing recreational bills and medical as well. So this company here leases the land for those companies to be involved. So as companies impact lives, then if they have the market share, the stock will generally trend to go up. But otherwise, uh, I appreciate you stopping by. I think you know this was really good information and we do this on a daily basis. Have a great day. Thanks for joining.